oscilloscopes. Your ham radio overview that hopefully covers you covers you up to the full license level. So the oscilloscope, as you can see right here, is perhaps one of the most useful pieces of equipment that we actually have as ham radio users, and actually in my case as a non ham radio user as well. Um incredible all it does at its core is show a voltage change in the vertical across time. So what I have here at the moment is a little sine wave generator, it's nothing special, it does a variety of frequencies. So you can see it that's it getting lower, that's it getting higher. I've just set it there at 1K. 1K is a standard test frequency in audio. Um, and also, when modulating, I imagine a lot of it's going to be 1K modulation. And you can see why 1K is a pretty good frequency, because we say the human voice, in especially the SSB filters that we know, they're 300 to 3K. And following a logarithmic scale, um, you know, you may think, wait a minute, one kilohertz is a lot close to 300 hertz. But actually thinking in doubling of octaves, it's about in the middle of where we perceive pitch. So it is actually a good choice for, um, for us radio users. So this is very simple. There's only really two knobs you need to understand on this thing. That's this one and this one. So... I've got this set at the minute to show um, a 1 kilohertz sine wave, as I said. And what I've done here is this is your voltage change. So this is a fairly, I say fairly new, it's not very new now. It's at least uh, 15 years old, I imagine. But you'll see if you've got an older oscilloscope, it'll have rotary and uh, it'll have switches, whereas this one is a hybrid digital um, digital and a analog output scope so you'll see it's a CRT I'll uh, actually pull the phone out the stand mind the jitters uh, don't power off see it's actually really long on the desk you know you've got that bit there and it's the, the, the way it works is electrons are heated up back here and push well pushed or drawn forward to the, towards this but on the way there there's a bunch of sort of electromagnets tops at each side of the tube pulling it as per what you have here and as per your time base selection so that's how very simply they work back in the stand not too wonky I hope but yes that's it uh, that's the uh, the very basics of an oscilloscope so in terms of our dials we've got a voltage dial which if you, um, you can just about see the grid lines here and what the voltage dial does you can see at the minute it's set to 10 volts per set to 1 volt sorry 1 volt, I had it on times 10 Pro, which is a different thing again, but 1 volt per deviation. So each one of these squares going up represents 1 volt. So we can see this wave is about 2 volts up, 2 volts down, 4 volts peak to peak, which is what ex exactly what I expect out of this thing here. I've, I've see, used these for a little while now, and they're about 4 volts output right at maximum. Of course, you've got the option to turn it down on this thing, but don't need to. So yes, that's um, that point. The other dial you have is time per deviation. So you'll sit at the mit see at the moment, hundred five hundred microseconds. So if I just change the x position slightly, probably get the uh, y more central as well. So we can see here that is covered that far for one wave if we see you know it's gone up and one down 
500 microseconds each, so 500, 500. So a whole waveform is 1,000 microseconds, also known as a 1 millisecond at 1K. That's perfect. So you can see it's all about setting your deviations. Now if I change this, for example, now I've put it to 200 microseconds, I'm just going to change the X position again, so I've got a good point to see from. So, 200, 400, uh, 600, 800, 1000, we can see in space of a thousand microseconds, a one millisecond again, it's a waveform, and that's all this point does. The other controls which you've seen me use, uh, I knock the intensity, that's all that does, that can get very bright. I always try and set them fairly low, apparently if you set them too high, I've never had it myself, but then again I haven't been using oscilloscopes too long compared to many of other, other people that have, purely due to the fact I'm fairly young. Um, you can put marks on the screen and you know they're permanent, so I try and keep the intensity down. Um, the other ones I've used is Y position and X position, uh, just as you can see, exposition moves the capture of your wave um, from side to side, Y position up and down. The only other thing to note with oscilloscopes is trigger. So you'll see that's a sc scope that's not triggering. And um, it doesn't quite look right on the phone because the phone's frame rate is uh, not quite right. But essentially, you've got this, it's trying to get it. But it can't quite latch, because the um, and what trigger is is it basically finds the same start point for every time. So if you put it in a good trigger mode, this AC trigger at the minute, um, most scopes just have AC, DC, and I think external trigger, and this one has a lot more like high pass filter and a low pass filter, noise reject, and. Uh, TVL and TVF. I think those are TV filters for him when you're working on their older TVs. But yeah, for the sake of that, so oh, and one last thing on here, you've got AC and DC coupling. Now this isn't um, you can see little sign changes there on this scope. That's because it's digital scope. Often you won't see stuff like that. The sort of these details here are sort of only relevant to um not sure if you can see them right they're a bit bright that does say that says 500 mi microseconds that tells you um your vo y voltage is one volt it's not quite great there and that's just um your trigger mode up there uh so Yes, but AC and DC coupling, and basically that's um, if you have sort of a capacitor on the input, and that can be useful for stopping DC spikes. Because what you can have is you can have an AC waveform that's superimposed with DC. So effectively, it's actually coming out your equipment somewhere up there, you know, if zero volts there, it's floating up above zero volts all the time. And often on the scope, that's not very useful as you can see. <laughs> It goes up above the screen, so you could either Y position it, or the better thing to do is to use AC coupling. Now DC coupling, sometimes you will actually want to see that DC shift, so you'll put a DC couple on there, so it'll actually show up with the DC shift. The other thing that you might see is ground coupling, and that just all that's doing is shorting the input to ground. And often what that was used for on old scope is just you know, if it's a little bit out like that, you just calibrate it into the center lines on your X and Y before you actually start to use the scope again. So, yeah, that's the very basics of um, your scope. What I'm, I'm going to end this little segment now and um, put on to the next bit where I hopefully will show you... Um, a modulated waveform. So we're back again, and uh, this is a piece of kit of my father's. 
is a Nombrex uh, RF generator with built-in AF generator, so audio frequency, and it modulates internally as well. But um, you'll see here, this is the output from the AF generator. It's not particularly very clean. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit spiky at the bottom, but you know, it'll, for the purposes of demonstration, I believe it will suffice. So um, I'm just going to go and put it over onto RF. Here we are, this is the RF output. Which, as you can see, is pretty, it's pretty okay. It's still the same problem here. But you know, as I said, purposes of demonstration. So here's the, uh, the modulated output I have at the minute. So it's... Um, we're looking at this actually on the wrong way as such. What we need to do is actually head out back here and then get this to trigger, which does require that other trigger mode. And we can see, although it's not great, we can see our... Remember how our wave was particularly nasty? Well, we can actually see that wave. And, you know... All this fuzzy bit in here is actually really high frequency. This stuff, which is our standard stuff, but as we go out, we can see it's been amplitude modulated, so the amplitude of each one is slowly decreasing. So if I. It's caught the wrong part of the wave for me, but. I might be able to get it to trigger on a different slope. But yeah, we can see how it's um, come down and then come back up. And as we go in, as we're zooming in, we're ending up zooming in on this main bit, which isn't changing very much, which is a bit annoying. You know, I'd rather it catched a bit later. But then again, that's just how it does it. But as we zoom out, we can see actually that point there is a lot smaller than that point there. And that's what, if I turn the intensity down so it's not blaring the camera, that's exactly what we're looking for. I apologise for the music in the background. And that's, that's AM modulation. Alright, we're back. This is a digital oscilloscope, a bit different to the analogue one that I showed you. Just in the fact that it is nowhere near as long, <laughs> which is incredibly useful. Um, certainly a, a great advancement in technology. Um, there's some pros and against of a digital one. Um, I'd say, for example, you can see already it's a little bit jumpy as such. But that's alright, you know. But then again, when it locks on, it's fairly good as well. So, you know, I, there's all sorts of other things you can do this. So you can take, like, sort of a screenshot of your wave and save it in that. You've got these uh, things like auto trigger, where if you've got something, you go, oh, I'm fiddling around with the controls and I can't find it. Just press the auto button, it'll find it for you. No. Um, it's really useful. So, um,. The only other thing I was going to mention on about the other scope is um, for the purposes of uh, those of you who have a scope that um, this is the other disadvantage of a digital scope. You can see it's taking an age to realise what's actually going on. So, um, But the other thing is that all scopes, well most of them, have a little tag point on them. Um, the other one did, it was actually along the bottom, it was like a banana jack, where um, you can plug them in and uh, they put out a square wave output, when this one, exactly like that, and um, you know, that's great for testing your scope to make sure all is well with your scope, um, you know, I, this one's very nice, I, I'm very happy to this, have this one. The other thing you'll have noticed with the other scope, this scope is four channels. Now what that means is you can display four different things simultaneously. 
so fired for for um for a bit of fun. I'll uh, hook up this signal generator. My channel too. Um, it's not quite triggering right. I want it to trigger almost independently, but it's a But yeah, you can see for the purposes of this, usually if you have separate channels, you'll have them all triggering, triggering on them. You know, that's actually stopped it and taking a screenshot for a moment. But you'll have them all basically triggering at the same point. You'll see this wave is actually wandering slowly that way. And that's because it can't trigger against the other wave. But yeah, it's really useful to have that functionality because if you need to know what four different things are doing in terms of voltage across time all at once that's that's what you need to do it so um yeah that's a uh, last little bit on them um, the digital scope I have they're, they're great you know in all honesty and um these days for the price of a analog versus the price of a well the price of a cathode ray versus the price of a digital um I'd say get the one with the most functions, but that's me. I do prefer the smoother view, because you'll see on this, you know, it's a little bit jumpy and jaggy and just a little bit, you know. It's still really good, but, um, you know, it could be if, you know, the, the smoother waveforms you get with the actual cathode array, because that's what it does, you know, you're pulling electrons and it just sort of smooths out you know it's like a you've got an LCD here which can display sharp edges whereas um, displaying sharp edges easily on a cathode ray isn't as doesn't happen as well um, but yeah just a little bit on the, uh, the old digital scope so uh, I hope this video has helped those of you um, and yeah, that's it from me.